In his book, Cadillac Desert, author Mark Reisner described Los Angeles as a city with no reason to be where it was. It had no minerals, no metals, no forests, and most importantly, no water. But it was one determined individual's actions that brought this vital element to the city of Los Angeles, William Mulholland, the architect and the engineer of the great Los Angeles aqueduct. An Irish-born immigrant, William Mulholland began his career in Los Angeles as a ditch digger, or Zanjero, for a Los Angeles water system that was no more than a series of wooden canals called Zanjas. Throughout his tenure with the Los Angeles Water Company, he rose from the ranks of a humble ditch digger to a project foreman, and eventually to the superintendent of the Los Angeles water system. By 1903, Los Angeles had grown from a small pueblo to a town of 100,000 people and was faced with a heavy drought. Its only source of water, the rainfall-dependent Los Angeles River, had nearly been sucked dry, forcing the city to begin looking elsewhere for water. Mulholland's good friend, Fred Eaton, the mayor of Los Angeles, informed him of a great valley over 200 miles northeast of Los Angeles. The Owens Valley and its local Owens River seemed to be the key to quenching Los Angeles' thirst and replenishing its depleted water supply. As Eaton began to buy up water rights along the Owens River, Mulholland led the Los Angeles Water Board in designing an aqueduct that would transport water across the treacherous Sierra Nevada mountain range over the vast Mojave Desert right into the city of Los Angeles. After the plans were completed, a citywide vote was held on whether to build the impossible project. The drought-stricken city expressed great enthusiasm for the project, with an average vote of 10 to 1 ratio and the city's highest voter turnout for the time. Everyone on his side, Mulholland set out to take action on the aqueduct. Despite having no formal engineering training and nothing more than a grammar school education, Mulholland was determined to make his vision a reality. Construction commenced in 1908 in the Owens Valley. A massive undertaking of men, livestock, and materials was underway with a workforce of almost 4,000 at construction's peak. At a rate of only 8 feet per day, Mulholland pushed his crews through the seemingly impossible project blasting a record 600 feet of tunnel in less than a month. The tunneling methods that, that, that were used on the aqueduct were very efficient and other places in the world copied the methods that they developed on building the aqueduct. He used a, a, a technique called placer mining. Um, placer mining actually had been used in the mining industries a long time and so in digging out what he did for the aqueduct using this they, they used it in the Panama Canal. Years later, the 226-mile-long aqueduct was completed. Between 30,000 and 40,000 residents of Los Angeles attended the opening gates of the aqueduct. Many brought tin cups to drink the water fresh out of the cascades that came roaring down the concrete canal. It was here William Mulholland, a man of few words, said to a thirsty Los Angeles, there it is. Take it. William Mulholland, while almost forgotten today, is truly the father of Los Angeles. The city is his legacy. The aqueduct helped give birth to the modern metropolis of Los Angeles. The population soared from about 100,000 people prior to the aqueduct's opening in 1913 to 1 million in 1922. It continued to grow at a rate faster than any other major city in the world. The aqueduct also represented a great step in a geological sense as well. It was one of the first instances of a major American city changing the natural geographic patterns of a waterway to lead to a city elsewhere for use as a main water source rather than to have the city built directly at the source. In California, it's a definitely a milestone. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually a pretty amazing uh, piece of engineering. It flows entirely by gravity, no pumps. It would be, it would be one of the more important uh, civil engineering uh, projects 
in the country. The aqueduct's influence is not just witnessed in LA, it is seen throughout the world. It was the predecessor to world-changing projects such as the Panama Canal. The people building the canal at the same time came here to California to see how Mulholland was building these dams with hydraulic fill. And they copied his methods. So hydraulic fill dams were kind of invented in the building of the aqueduct. But following the aqueduct's opening in 1913, the once thriving agriculture of the Owens Valley slowly began to shrivel up. Residents complained that they had sold their land and natural riparian water rights to Los Angeles without fully knowing what they were going to be used for. None of it was necessarily done in contravention of California water rights. Despite the legal legitimacy of the sales, the people of the Owens Valley began to fight back against the parasitic aqueduct, even to the point of dynamiting vital points of it. Whereas Mulholland was a saint to Los Angeles, he was no more than a scoundrel in the eyes of the people of the Owens Valley. The, the acts of taking water from the Owens Valley for the city of Los Angeles, I don't think it's, we can necess, even though it happens, I don't think it's necessarily something that should be focused on one individual. A fictional account of this alleged swindling was told in the 1974 film Chinatown. <laughs> Los Angeles, 1937. Despite being set two decades later, the film's great success brought the scandal into the public conscious again, and has become yet another reason the scandal is just as much a part of Mulholland's legacy as the aqueduct. They're paying for water that they're not going to get. Oh, that's all taken care of. See, Mr. Gibbs, either you bring the water to L.A., or you bring L.A. to the water. William Mulholland's legacy was further tarnished on the day of the Great St. Francis Dam disaster. The St. Francis Dam was a concrete dam built to provide a reservoir of surplus water in close proximity to Los Angeles. But upon its first complete filling on March 12, 1928, the dam catastrophically failed, sending a tidal wave of 12 billion gallons of water, a whole year's supply, to rage through the nearby San Francisco and Santa Clarita River valleys. The torrents leveled local farmlands and residential areas, killing approximately 450 people. It remains the greatest civil engineering disaster in United States history. If anyone's actions were to blame for the dam's tragic failure, they were William Mulholland's. If, if, if there's one person who has the majority of the blame for it, it's William Mulholland. He picked the site, he decided what dam would build there, he decided whether or not to use outside experts. He decided to raise the dam twice during its construction, but not make it any wider. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't put the blame on anyone else, really, that, except what uh, William Mulholland. A 1992 study revealed that the break in the dam was actually caused by an ancient landslide along the San Francisco fault line, undetectable during the dam's construction in the 1920s. But despite this evidence, Mulholland's reputation has still been soiled. Mortified by the disaster, he resigned from his position as head of the Department of Water and Power a few months later in disgrace. Of the disaster, he said, I envy the dead. In 1935, seven years after his resignation, Mulholland died at the age of 80. But despite his death, William Mulholland's aqueduct continues to transport water. While only 35% of Los Angeles' water supply still comes from the Owens Valley, the city continues to evolve into one of the greatest economic and cultural centers of the world, an accomplishment that would have been impossible without Mulholland's foresight. The aqueduct's means of water transportation has influenced modern projects such as the establishment of the Metropolitan Water District, the main source of Southern California's water. The district is a multi-billion dollar collaboration of over 30 Southern California cities and water districts, which supplies over 10 million people from LA to San Diego with water daily from faraway sources such as the Colorado River. So whether seen as the father of Los Angeles or as a crook who drained the Owens Valley dry and accounted for the loss of hundreds of lives, every time millions use garden hoses, showers, or faucets, they are witnessing William Mulholland's legacy in action.